Another day, another cockapoo. Milo here is rather timid, so I just took that minute at the start of the groom just to settle him. As you can see, he didn't really want to come near me, so after a few minutes, I could gently lure him over and give him a good old head scratch to let him know he was safe. This would be a theme throughout the groom where I'll just constantly reassure him, give him a few cuddles to let him know you're in a safe place and this is going to be okay. You'll find he actually settles quite nicely throughout this groom and at points he even has a little lie down whilst I brush him and do what I need to do. After a hygiene trim he was ready to get in that bath to be oh smelling oh so good. If you love cockapoos or dogs in general like Milo here then please do subscribe to the channel I'd really appreciate it and leave a comment below to let me know what sort of dogs you would like to see come up on these videos. Supposedly, the cockapoo came from America, the US of A, back in the 1960s. The idea was to create a non-shedding, intelligent, active companion dog whose coat would require slightly less care than other dogs of a similar size. Although supposedly non-shedding, I personally, not too sure I believe it, I find every single dog, no matter what it is, unless it's completely bold, of course, will leave slighter residue of hair wherever you are. As you can see, Milo here has started to settle and we did a quick trim of those nails. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, possibly. And yeah, he was such a good boy for it. I can't believe that this, with his first trim with me, he was being so good. And I really do think he appreciated the fact that there weren't any restraints. So he could lie down if he wanted to, or he could stretch his legs. The interesting thing about cockapoos is that when you see they're coming in, you know you have no idea what they're going to look like. Some can look like Milo here, some can look just like a cocker spaniel, some can look just like a poodle, and some can look nothing at all like either three. So you've got to wait for them to come in, identify what do you think is going to be the best look for this dog, because what might look good on Milo probably won't look good on another because of the way the coat is carried. Milo here, you can't really give a really round nose, which some people like on their dogs, because his coat just won't take it, it won't hold. So for me, I like to trim off the nose on top of it slightly to get a sort of a really nice, handsome look. Really is a very well behaved dog. And I actually find quite often timid dogs are some of the best behaved because they don't really want to do anything. But it can go one of two ways, really. Sometimes they want to attack you and sometimes they're just like Milo and they'll just stand perfectly still. I'm getting towards the end of the groom now. I'm just doing those finishing touches by trimming his head. So I'm taking the bulk of that off the top of his head. His owners in particular don't like him to have too much of a top knot. They don't like that look. So I took it nice and balanced with the rest of the trim. And now what you're going to see is the dog groomer's curse. What happens when you're a grooming dog? You notice every single minute detail which isn't quite right. And when I get to the end, I think, oh, yeah, I finished. Let's have a look, good look. And then I'll give him a stroke, get, let him know he's being awesome. And then I'm like, oh, dear. Look, I spotted something that needs sorting, so the scissors come back out, we're trimming that ear, and then we're done. Anyway, he's looking pretty smart. 